All right, welcome guys. Uh, as for today, we are not going to be doing a uh, face-to-face uh, kind of uh, video screen. We're just going to be sharing my computer screen so you can go over some of the charts and information that I have that Yomi and I are going to talk about. Uh, welcome to our first joint YouTube video besides uh, regurgitating our podcast uploads. Uh, we will start doing this regularly and this is just the first installation of this. We did have our recent podcast we uploaded last week and we were going over the our predictions of the, the outcome of the Trump verdict and then when the Trump verdict came out we just wanted to go and it, we wanted the, to look at the chart for the verdict moment and use it as a slower progression chart, that kind of thing, so we could discuss what comes next. Just recapping on some things that we talked about in the podcast, we did determine that there was a likelihood that he would be, if he was convicted, that he he would be convicted, but they would like he would obviously appeal it, and it wouldn't stick as a verdict, uh, like when we go into the appeals process. There is a chance that it it could still have issues in the appeal process, like the appellate courts in New York, just because of the bias that's obviously going on. But he did say his attorney and legal counsel did say that they're going to push it to the Supreme Court if they have to. So I have full faith, and not just faith, but looked at the astrology charts as well, which we're going to discuss now, about uh, how this is all going to pan out for him. And uh, Yomi, do you have any... Any notes that, um, any updates on any information that's been going on? I know I've been looking at a lot of stuff, but I know you said you had notes. Yummy. Sorry, I was muted. I apologize. <laughs> so I was looking actually at a lot of videos throughout the weekend on to two, two specific people really that have come out of the woodwork and have pretty much stated point blank that we're, we've kind of handed Trump the presidency on a silver platter. Yes. Um, one of them was Marco Rubio, which I was really shocked. But then I yeah. also found out he is in the running to be VP for Trump, which is pretty shocking to me, in all honesty. Really? really? Yes. Yes. I read this and I was like, huh? I wouldn't. No, I, wouldn't. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. I just don't trust the guy. Um, But... And then I did see an RFK uh, video with Jesse Waters that was done the night of the conviction. And even he stated it is a dark time in American history. So, you know, a lot of people right now are just, you know, panicking, freaking out. You know, we need to stock on this. We need to stock up on that. Um, Always. It's a, yeah, we already know. We, we talk about it every single month. So Yeah, we talked about that two episodes ago. Yes. We talked about the Pluto retrograde, the psyche, about people being paranoid about what's going on in the media and stuff that's going to really antagonize people's anxiety. So that stuff's still going on until October, guys, so this is part of it. Oh, yeah. So, so um, did you have any other notes, or is that kind of like what you saw? Because I saw the Marco Rubio thing, too. Yeah, no, that's what I I, I wrote a lot of, of like, kind of little astro notes the polls are really fascinating which we'll go over that later because i know you have information on polls too yeah yeah and another thing i just watched right before we started talking um one of the billionaire donors to trump made us made a suggestion on who he thinks would be a good vp for him and he was saying uh, governor greg abbott from texas i mean yeah he he's he he's no nonsense but then that leaves Texas vulnerable on who Texas can trust to do what Abbott has done. Right. That's what I thought, too. That's what I was thinking. I was like, man, that would be a sad day for Texas. But, you know. It would be a sad day for Texas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So we're going to go through our list here. Um, so I actually did write a note down when um, that there was 52.8 million raised since the verdict. But that was before the weekend, guys. So. There's 52.8 million raised since the verdict, and that's from small donors, including apparently like 30% of people who have never voted before or have never been affiliated with a with any kind of candidate in either side, which is crazy. And that is crazy. Yeah, and then I just was corrected because I was watching another thing. That billionaire donor that was talking about Greg Abbott being the VP, he said he just donated a couple million 
and now it's actually well not a couple million but a couple hundred thousand now it's up to as of today june 3rd we have 200 million raised since the verdict it's freaking wild well i think that's really that's awesome that we've raised that he's raised that much money because i mean i'll tell you what i went out with a trump shirt to the fair this weekend oh you did yes i did how'd that go and girl yes i had people that gave me the side eye and you know the whispers but i had a lot of people looking at me like damn where'd you get that shirt i like that shirt nice and i was like hell yeah this is cool like there's people that I, like I said, that I know that were anti-Trump people who are now supportive of Trump, people that are voting that have, like you said, that have never voted before, um, which is really, really cool. Yeah. You what even is- have youngsters saying they're, they're going to vote for Trump. Yeah, they're saying there's something about like 15 to 20 percent of Gen Z vote is voting for Trump. Yeah, they and actually like- are. Like crazy, I'm like oh my god! Like you might as well go into the polls that you got since we're talking about this. No problem. So for polls, I found something that was really interesting. Now you said, I think, did you have any polls that you had looked up recently? Uh, no, I did. I don't remember. I just think okay. that uh, I just think I was looking up like like the donations. All right. So here's what I found that I thought, and I actually sent you a message on it that it was very um controversial or you know not correct in a way very skewed so when i look up mainstream media information on um who is higher in the polls everybody's saying that biden is above trump by you know very slight margin but that he is over trump yeah exactly then i go to the gallup poll website just browsing on the internet today and found, and I will actually, let me see if I could share it here also. Um, here we go. So Biden and Congress approval ratings are persistently low. Nice. Basically, as you could see here, Biden is now at a 39% approval rating with Congress going down to a lovely 13% approval rating. <laughs> is that what Congress is that? Is that the Senate or the House? It doesn't. It doesn't give me like detail. Detail here. It says majorities of Americans continue to disapprove of the way Biden and Congress are handling their jobs. Fifty-six mm. percent Biden and eighty-one percent are disapproving of that. And this this was from May first to the twenty-third. That and would this, that would make sense with like all the money being given away to Ukraine. Yep, and exactly. Now that you mention it, it actually began one week after Biden signed that bipartisan bill providing the money to Ukraine. There we go. Now, there is something interesting as well that I did. Don't know if a lot of people picked up on this, actually. The day of the Trump conviction, Biden announced that he that he secretly gave Ukraine permission to strike inside Russia with U.S. weapons. That's right. That's right. So I, I think. Did you tell me that? Did you? Tell yes. Me that? Okay, yes. I knew somebody told me. Yep. Yes. Now, what's really strange about the whole thing is that he gave them the okay weeks ago. This was released under the hush hush of all the drama and hoopla of the whole Trump situation. Right. Deflect. Pretty much. Oh, stupid. Yeah, and then did you hear the other part is he made the automatic uh, draft for anybody 18 to, I think, 30? Yes, I sent you the link on that. Yeah. It is It is a requirement for, and I honestly just found this out for, for my son. So and if you're from the ages of 18 and 25, you are required to sign up for selective service. Oh, if man. Congress passes a law, then it would be a requirement for any male individuals to get any sort of financial aid to join the military. And basically, if, you know, if there's a draft, you're going, period, end of story. Oh, hell no. No, no, no. (laughs) Like, you'll be told you need to report here at this time. Um, And if you're not there, they're going to hunt you down. Yeah, they do that. Newsflash, and I mean, I don't know if if it would be a problem, but a certain country's 
citizens are being forced to sign up to fight against their will to where a lot of people are fleeing their countries. And other countries are also now stating that they're willing to give troops support. So don't be surprised. Right. Right. All right. So now that we got all that details out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I got a list here that you guys are seeing so I can stay on track because me and Yomi will go off for like two hours if we don't. And we don't want to do that for YouTube. We're going to try to make it short and sweet. So anyway. All right. So I thought this would be interesting to pull up before I do my list. Me and Yomi have talked about this on the podcast. I just kind of wanted to reemphasize this. This is his sub, uh, Fidaria sub period. This is a medieval tip, um, um, a typical medieval um, prediction for anybody. You can do this when you have their natal chart. And this is just emphasizing again uh, on that he's going to be busy, uh, making the most of opportunities, needs to concentrate on matters. You go down here and it says this is this is a good time for networking skills with, and good with new, launching a new project or sales or marketing plan or business, which means – uh, him using this conviction to profit, uh, not profit, but to market himself is working fantastically. And then it says the seeds of ideas can now be put into action. Decisions regarding your home, family life, and financial matters are also highlighted. The more time you spend ensuring that uh, that you are well equipped in all areas of your life, the more you'll feel emotionally satisfied in the next in the next phase. And That's interesting because it does mention those financial matters, which are exactly what's being highlighted right now. Right. And I don't know why I don't have the rest of it, but the other part was uh, that during this time you might have legal challenges and uh, lawsuits, which is still ongoing with that as well. Mm -hmm. And some, something I was looking at, I was looking at legal analysts, like perspective and like some attorneys saying how the appeal is going to go, that even though when he puts the appeal in because of the way the courts work, he likely won't even be going into that that uh, trial for the appeal until after the election. Does that sound? Yes, sound I, did hear, you? I did hear something like that. Yeah, I heard that from a couple different sources. So I'm like, okay, so they knew that he wasn't going to be able to appeal this right away. And this is just to bash him, which is originally what me and Yomi were predicting anyway, that we didn't think this was really going to go anywhere, that this was just to bash him in the first place. I just didn't think they would push it to the point that they would rig the jury. I think what it is, it's optics at the end of the day. Yeah. Anything to put it in the record books or to put it on record that yeah. this is who he was. Because, like, I had this conversation with my son earlier today. You can look something up on Google all day long. But how do you know that the information they're giving you is factual? Right. How do you know that the search engine's information is not rigged to what they want you to see and not what the actual truth is? Exactly. The history we're taught is not, I mean, yes, we, we have, we're taught history, absolutely, but do we really know 100% how they lived, the customs of the time? No, we don't. We only know what we have access to at this point, unless that's, you actually lived it. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, yeah. That's why reading autobiographies are really helpful. Exactly. I love having – I have a couple of Founding Fathers autobiographies, and I love reading it. They're very cool. It gives you a real insight to how things actually were because even stuff in our textbooks, you know, even from, like, old school, like, in the 80s and 90s, they're warped too. Oh, so, yeah. There's you know. actually one book that I've read. It's not an autobiography, but it's derived from George Washington's diary. And it's a Glenn Beck book. I think it's – I don't remember the name of it, but it's about George Washington – in the Revolutionary War. And the way that he uses his, his diary entry to then illustrate the reality of the time, it's like you're transported to the time. If, you know, that's a really good book to read if anyone's into that stuff. Nice, nice. All right. So let's see. Now I got, we'll start with the Trump trial and the progress solar return. That was the initial, sorry, I'm going to have to go through all these because I don't do them in order. Because I just send these to Yomi while I'm thinking about them. So, I do you. have an update on the Georgia case, actually. Oh, fill me in. So the Georgia court case has now set an October 4th hearing to consider whether the DA should remain on the Trump case. Really? Yep. 
Nice. So this may not even go to court until after the, the whole election at this point. Okay. Hang on a second. I guess I didn't send you that one. Let me Trump trial. Nice. Yeah, it's all going to backfire one, one way or another. We know that. It's the infamous uh, Uranus Midhaven conjunction for tr his son Midhaven conjunction Uranus for Trump that we've talked about before. And he's, it, he's, he's like that silly little saying we used to say when we were kids, like, I'm rubber, you're glue, what, what, however it goes. Whatever you yeah, say. Yeah, whatever, whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks on you. Yeah, yeah, that's exact. that is Trump's, like, signature right there for people yep. who can't remember. Even one of our buddies who is a, is a, a loyal listener, he, he brought up to us the other day, he says, look, Trump has Uranus on the Midhaven. And I'm like, yes, dude. We talk about that all the time. <laughs> it's like, anyway. Um, so the Trump trial, this is the reason why I want to bring this up, is because I'm going to look at the progressive return as well for the verdict and all that to give you an idea of how this is going. So the Trump trial started on April 22nd, 2024, on Monday at 8 a.m. in Manhattan, New York. We've gone over this chart as well in the podcast. When, so we had the future houses here tell you how this, tr how this uh, trial will go. So you notice that the first house and the seventh house that are the now house and the tenth are all empty, meaning that there's a lot of action being missed or things that aren't actually panning out for the trial itself when it begins. And that's, that's due to a lot of the elusiveness, which there's still elusiveness now because we don't even know exactly what charge Trump was charged with. They're claiming that it's all 34 felony counts, but that's not the way that the jury was instructed for people who didn't pay attention or didn't have time to. They were just told if there's anything you might find think that he feel that he's guilty on, you can come back with a guilty verdict. And then the judge just signed off on all of them, which is totally unconstitutional, by the way. But uh, so you see the 10th, 7th, and the 1st all empty. Nothing going on. Then you see Virgo's actually got the trans-Pluto aspect in the 4th house, meaning that this is a very unstable trial, an unstable hearing. And just the mutable, again, on the angles, just insinuates that the, this is going to be a very shaky um, prosecution in general. Then we look at the future houses. It gives us an idea of what's going on. we got the Hades Chrono signature here in the second house. We've already talked about this is more of like a sinister, uh, you know, uh, malicious intention kind of signature here. Then we got Black Moon Lilith in there. Um, and Merc or, sorry, Virgo in Black Moon Lilith is abusing information. Very typical. And then the 8th house series is there. Not, nothing really to comment on that, honestly. Um, then here is, this is this is the interesting part. There's the Malefics, Mars and Saturn in the 11th, as well as Neptune and Chiron. So with Neptune right here means that the outcome of this, of well, this house actually has to do with networking, social media, the exterior um, world, that sort of thing. So they have no idea how bad this is going to backfire. Cause so this Trump trial signature has a malefic signature in the future house for how it's going to pan out publicly. And then Neptune being there means that they had no idea it was going to pan out as, as it was. And definitely that's an uncertainty with the trial itself. When me and Yomi talked about the original Trump trial chart before this all panned out the way it has, I used the Neptune signature as an indication that we're not going to have a solid verdict, which is evident by the way the verdict came out. But also this was my, kind of my indication that it wasn't going to be a solid verdict. Like it was going to, he was going to actually be found guilty. That means he would either, it would be a hung jury is what my initial thing was. Or if he's convicted, he'll appeal it and he'll get, he'll win the appeal. And I mean, it, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a lot like the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. It's the, it's, He's going to be tried in the court of law, absolutely, but he's also being tried in the court of public opinion. The court of public opinion says otherwise. Right, right. That would be interesting to actually go back and look at the Johnny Depp chart trial thing and then look at the Trump one, but we'll do that another time. Yeah. And anyway, so important dates to remember. July 11th is going to be the day of sentencing. So what I did is I took the, trial, uh, the Trump trial chart for... April 22nd, and I made a progressive return chart for the day of the sentencing. So this will give us an idea 
like when you think about the Trump trial being a natal chart, we're thinking about the prosecution's intentions. Like if you were going to just say like, here's our game plan prosecution, this is their birth chart. So this is the outcome of their trial because we already know the verdict, obviously. So this will give us an idea of what's going to happen for the prosecution side when it comes to um, the, the Trump trial itself. Again, we've got mutable on the angles, meaning it's a, a shaky, unstable uh, stable, uh, uh, event going on. We also see the malefics both together as well again in the seventh house, the current one. We got Black Moon Lilith here in the first house. So abusive information, malefics both in the seventh house, not looking good there. Mm -mm. We don't have a lot of things going on in the 10th house as well. I wouldn't even consider Sedna anything important because that one takes like 10,000 years to move and I'm not worried about it. But the only thing I find kind of funny is that the Agul star is on the on the cusp of the 10th house, which yeah. is very, very fitting, very fitting for this. <laughs> um, we look at the, the future houses. We got the moon and the south node there. We've also got Pluto here. Anytime Pluto's in a, in a future house, I don't see anything being stable or consistent or panning out, that kind of thing. Then we look at the eighth house. We've got Neptune there as well and Chiron again. So what we learned from the original Trump trial chart is that when this was in the 11th house, this meant no good for what was going on for the, the trial itself. And then here we got that sinister chart, uh, sinister signature again in the 11th house, the Hades thing. So this is just, in, this right here kind of insinuates that they're going to try to sentence him in some way, shape, or form. They will give him some sort of sentence. But what I was listening to on a couple of legal analysts and a, one of Trump's legal counsel is that they're likely going to uh, issue a stay on the actual sentencing, which seems likely due to the fact that he has no criminal history, due to, due to the way that the courts actually rule, on, are typically supposed to be ruling, on criminal cases like this in New York. Um, but he, Trump also did say he doesn't mind if he goes under house arrest. But I was literally about to say house arrest might be something they do. Yeah. If, if anything happens immediately on the 11th of July, it will be house arrest. Yeah. I think so. And I mean, it, and, it, and it's going to, because if you think about how this entire case is gone, and this is another thing to really think about, He's been put on a gag order since day one. Right. He can't say anything. His attorneys can't even say anything. They're, that's how tight that gag order is. You put the man on house arrest, the way these people think it's, well, if we force him to stay home, he can't go um, do rallies. He's not going to have any support. Well, little do they know, the man always got something up his sleeve. He's going to have a plan in place if he's on house arrest to still get the message out. Oh yeah, still do the debates and still get it done. Oh yeah, he could just do tele tele you know um, conferences, or he could, you know, he could invite um, y y reporters to to Mar Lago. He could have rallies oh, yeah. in Mar Lago. Yeah, he could he could have um, online you know town town um, events. I think in if he yeah, I I think if he did it like he did during COVID where it was like a two-hour block of you listening to the president at random. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or yeah. kind of like how, I can't forget this president's name now. He used to call do what was called fireside chats during World War II, where Americans would sit by the radio and listen to the president's message. Over? I think so. Or maybe that's just my guess. <laughs> Hold up. Let me look it up. Let me look this up. Okay. I, I, I mean, I think about the fireside chats. It was done by Roosevelt. It was the fireside chats. I see, tr and, and I've been saying this to my husband for a while. Trump would be a president that could take that concept and turn it on its head for, for today's world. And if that were to happen, I have a feeling that's what he would do. Yeah, and you know the the advantage to him doing that too with the growing Gen Z uh, support he has, a lot of them a lot of them have social anxiety or don't want to leave the house or like there's a huge yeah. percentage of them that don't drive. Yeah. They would more than likely tune into him doing online stuff rather than 
going to physical rallies. It would. It would. It also helps him get his message out there unfiltered, uninterrupted, and unskewed, which we all know the media is going to skew whatever he says anyways. Right. Um, as they do with anybody. If they take one bit, they, they flip the script on you. But it's his message unfiltered to the, to, to the American people. Exactly. And, and I he'd think, have to come back to Twitter for that, in my opinion. Please come back to Twitter, Mr. Trump, if you listen to this. Oh, my God. The other thing I heard. So <laughs> there are rumors going around that he want, if he's elected, he wants to make Elon Musk his economic advisor. I mean, do you blame him? Yeah, the richest man in the world. I think that sounds like a solid plan. <laughs> I mean, I like I, – well, I mean – Elon Musk is a very smart man. I, I don't like the electric car idea, but I think he did it to set himself up with the end other endeavors he's got. But, yeah. I think I he think had it, good intentions it, with the electric car. He but. did. I think he did. But it's I think it's, it's too ahead of its time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would love for him to get dragged into politics because he could, you know, Trump could basically set him up to be a future, you know, POTUS. Oh yeah, that would be that would be super cool. I would be down for that. <laughs> oh yeah, another one that I think would be good, in my opinion, um, is Vivek from yeah. Zwami, and I'm sorry, I apologize if I mispronounced it. Just because he is a constitutional scholar, like he knows the Constitution front and back. Um, I know he's not a bulldog, which is what we would want by the president's side. But when it comes to making sure the Constitution is followed, that's the man you want to make sure you have there to make sure you're doing shit right, number one. Number two, perfect person to groom for presidency in the future. I agree and disagree. I think Vivek would, would be a great presidential candidate, too. But I mm -hmm. think that that sentiment is more our generation and younger, yes. maybe. Yes. Because he's, we looked at his chart, remember, when we were talking about presidential we did. candidates? We did. And and he was a little bit uncompromising, which I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but to sway people who may be like, wow, you're coming on a bit too strong, he's not going to be able to win them over. No, I mean, yeah, that's, that's where, you know, that's where he has to learn to be a different way. And, and, and we all have to put on a mask, so he has to learn to put on, I hate to say it, that politician mask. Yeah, or he needs to kind of, like, tone himself down a little. Like, keep yeah. the same message going, but be open-minded. Because yes. he, he's, that's what I think he's missing. Like, he's got the right ideas and the best intentions, but he's not open to anything else. It's like, it's either we do this or everything's screwed. And Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah and that, that's just too, too much for people. It is. It is. Did you see... I just remembered this, and it's completely off topic, but the UFC fighter on Saturday that gave President Trump a shout out. Yes, I'm the one that I'm the one that posted it on Facebook. Oh, you did. Okay, I was like, what? Yeah, I yeah. was so excited when I saw that. I was like, yep, there it is. Cause like George Stephanopoulos, ABC dude. Did like this quick um video? Yes, there, that one. It is right here, here. Let's hope I don't Not get a strike it. on that. I might have to. You can't hear it. No, we didn't hear it. Oh, thank goodness, because I just thought about that as I was doing that. I'm like, oh man, we're gonna get a strike on that because I got. I, I mean, got... it it played the video, but no audio, so you're good. Okay, cool. Should be good. Good, good, good. good. Okay, cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> that yeah. was pretty exciting to see, though. I was like, yeah, yeah. So some sort of boxer or something for UFC, like did a shout out to Trump and said, it's it's a travesty what they're doing to you. And I'm going to be donating to you here here soon. Yeah. And that was super cool. And that's just more money for that. Two hundred two hundred million. Two hundred million is a lot, a lot. Like and, you know, that's because the the billionaire donors over the weekend. So Friday it was $52 million. Then over Saturday and Sunday, um, billionaire donors and millionaire donors donated that the rest of it to make it $200 million, right? And they're wow. doing it as a response to the surge of momentum that he's getting from the base. They're like, Let's look see. at the base. It is. It's crazy, man.
I drive to where I live, and all you see is Trump flags on every yard. Yeah. Or a Trump sign. Or candidates saying, you know, if you want, you know, a Trump candidate, I'm your candidate. Um, we're, we're all starting even to feel it in small towns, the increase of taxes and everything. So we're even starting to say, hey, we need some change here. This is not good. Right. And then so, going, in, going into my next chart that I have up, guys. Yeah. The Trump verdict. So this is actually Donald Trump's uh, so, uh, progressive return, so I'm going a little out of order, but not really. Um, this, I, this is on topic to what we were just talking about with the money. When I believe Yomi and I both looked at this. I, no, we haven't. No, because this is when the actual uh, the actual verdict came out. So Yes, we haven't seen this one yet. So I think one of his one of his uh, solar progressed return uh, solar progressed return charts did have Jupiter in the in the eleventh house as well, but this right here it's the Jupiter and the Moon and Uranus right here an abnormal like beneficial thing is ongoing due to the person being violated so some sort of disruptive force is going to cause some sort of unpredictable benefits for him. Yeah, and, and Neptune this, in the tent, it's deceptive. Yeah, well this right here is rules the judgment, the verdict. Because the 10th house is ruled by Saturn, which Saturn's right here, by the way. Yeah. And Saturn is the judgment. So when you're looking at legal battles and legal cases, they're brought forth in the 9th house. This is where the your the prosecution and defense will lay out their case, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And then the judgment is progressed into the 10th house. So this tells you what will happen as an outcome of the trial itself. I think that's funny that Neptune's right there because that means that they're full of crap. And it also means that the verdict is not going to hold, which that's the signature that we were looking for uh, um, when we thought that they were going to do their verdict on, what did we say, Wednesday? Yes. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. But then this here, this Jupiter here, this is, this is uh, something beneficial. And then also the moon in Taurus, as I've talked to Yomi about as well, as long as you don't have it towards the, the 27th degree, when you have a moon in Taurus, it's supposed to be a signature for a silver spoon in your mouth or to be well off financially or to have financial gains. So I would say the $200 million as a response to his, his guilty verdict would be great financial gains. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. The other thing that uh, made me nervous about this chart at the moment when I looked at this initially, I was like, Oh God, he's got a son in the 12th house or yeah. And so mm -hmm. the 12th house rules a couple of things. It's the hidden realm. It also rules conspiracies and collective secrets, but it also rules hospitals, asylums, and prisons. I was literally about to say imprisonment of some kind, but right. So that's why I was like, mm. so, but I'm starting to think here. So I, after, after I was seeing, the, the reports on how much money's being raised, um, how much this is backfiring on them. I really think that now the DA and the judge are going to be scared about going completely ham on Trump at this at this sentencing hearing. I think they're going to try to be a little bit lenient. I'm th this is what I'm thinking. I think they're going to go a little bit more lenient. Like on May 30th when this verdict came out, they're like, yeah, throw the book at him. We're going to screw him over. But now... Just within these last, like, four four days, I think their attitude is going to change. And I'm hoping to see some other charts that may indicate that, close, uh, like, in the upcoming future. But I really think that, like, yeah, they were going to throw the book at him in this chart, which would be for May 30th. But maybe, oh, actually, you know what I can do? I know I wasn't, I know I wasn't going to do this, but, you know, I always do this. Let me. Whatever you got to do, girl. Let's put it in for today. I'll be today. learning something every day. Let's put it in for today. Donald Trump. Come on, pop up. Okay. Nope, still in the still in the twelfth house. So maybe they're dumb and they think that <laughs> maybe they're actually gonna still uh Well no, wouldn't that kind of mean like the entire gag order, you know, basically he can't speak. He's not allowed to express what he's thinking with Mercury in the twelfth. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's he's being prevented from expressing himself about what's happening. Meanwhile, he's feeling very much with that Leo Mars. 
Like he's ready to fucking just kill someone. Oh yeah. Like oh, yeah. legit. That's how I that's how I'm reading this chart. He's ready. He's ready to pounce. But he's being told, not just by the law, but by his people, this is what we need to do for right now. Yeah, because Palace is vigilante justice. It's also like a, a more radical um, side of Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And then Black Moon Lilith and Leo here. I have Black Moon Lilith and Leo. I know how that is. You, you tend to say stuff that gets you in trouble or you want to yes. really speak truth. And then his Mars right there. So like he really wants to run his mouth. And he's passionate about it too because he knows – of the injustice that's occurring to him. And he, and it's, you know, he did an interview with Fox recently during the weekend. Um, it's an hour. I haven't I watched haven't, the whole thing yet. I only saw I haven't either. I barely started it and I couldn't think cause I had kids walking in here all day while I was trying to hear stuff. People were still home from work. I was like, y'all gotta be kidding me, but I'm finished tonight, but it was really good so far. Yeah, I got, like, the snippet of it, like, a three-minute one I posted on my Facebook. But I saw that there's a whole hour. I'm like, damn, I need to watch that. Yes. But, <laughs> so, anyway, so this this is his uh, the progressive soul return chart for the verdict. Um, my, my consensus is at this time, going off of this chart, is that he will feel – there's some sort of incarceration signature with his son right there. But – yeah, at this time, I, I think that's what it is. And then I wanted to pull up because it's it? right on it's right on his ascendant. So it, to me, it's almost like it's not yet time for him to burst into the scene. You know what I'm saying? To you know, it's like the tiger or the lion that's hiding in the brush. Right. That's how I see it. He's waiting for the moment. And then here is. The Trump verdict. So this is, again, is is going off the Trump verdict chart, which was for the May 30th. This is the progressal return for the sentencing day. So this is like taking the verdict day on May 30th and then just fast-forwarding it to, to the sentence day. And this will be basically everybody the, – the, the whole court system was happy that they got, they got him guilty. They're really hoping to throw the book at him. That's the, that's the natal chart we're looking at right now. So first house, empty. That, that's, that's fascinating. So this is like the prosecution. Got nothing. Okay, they're just going to, you know, do nothing. Um, yeah, and it's a Sagittarius rising. So for them, it's whatever they can find to throw at this point. Yeah, and mutables on the angles again, unstable. That's this whole tri trial has been unstable. The fourth house, the now house, it's got, it's got the malefic Mars right there. It's got Eris there as well, Cure on here. Meaning that whatever happens as a result of this is just going to backfire beautifully. Um, the seventh house, we got that sinister signature there again. The tenth house, we've got nothing really going on. The south node, same same shit, different day kind of thing. Yeah. Future houses, we got Pluto there again. I've talked about Pluto being in a future house when you're looking at you know some sort of future event. It doesn't look good for whatever's going on. So we're talking about the guilty verdict doesn't look good. Then we got Uranus and Mercury in the fifth house. That's an unpredictable, abnormal communication or thoughts or something going on as a result of this. So not good. So this is going to play into uh, benefiting Trump or people like talking about how screwed up this is or how unjust it is, that kind of thing. Then in the eighth house here, this this is actually Astra, which is the goddess of justice. It's an asteroid. So when this, it's not going to tell me because it's a progress chart. But uh, this right here being here insinuates that some sort of justice is going to be brought forth. And that's in the same sign as his, his Mars, which is good. Um, then the 11th house, Poseidon's just something I don't I don't even pay attention to. And I'm looking at Hori charts as well. Um, and so I'm not seeing anything sticking from this. And or, like I said, they're, they're going to give him a sentence. This chart is where I made that, made that kind of conclusion. They're going to try to lay out some sort of sentence. But if they're smart, they're, they're going to go easy on him. They're just going to say a little bit of house arrest or a fine here or there or, they're going, or, or his uh, team is going to motion for a stay and they're not going to enforce anything. That's kind of where I'm leaning, motion for a stay and they're not going to enforce anything because they realize how much this is backfiring so badly. And it, Now we're back. Okay, so what did you just say? Can you repeat that? Yeah, the sun... 
um, sixth house with Mercury, it's everyone's going to be talking about him. It's going to be a part of our life on that day. That will yeah. be where, you know, everyone kind of like, you know, OJ Simpson trial or let's say Johnny Depp trial. Everybody's hooked to this. Everyone wants to know what's going to happen because that determines in a lot of ways where the country starts to move. You know what's really funny, too? I saw in my Facebook memories, the Johnny Depp trial was just getting lit, like, right around this time. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, synchronistic-wise. And a few days ago, the Civil War ended. Oh, really? Yes. What? Wow, I didn't even know that. Let me, yeah, I saw that. I was like, that's pretty cool. But we are in the Civil War degree currently, anyway. We are still in the Revolutionary War signatures currently, so, I mean. I wouldn't even say we're out of that until Pluto goes into uh, Pisces. No, because in all honesty, this is it right now. Yeah. Like, this whole situation is it, like, if, if I were to, if I were to put it, you know, let's say I was naming characters in history, you know, Trump would be like. Oh, Lordy, because now we're dealing with political imprisonment. But like, you know, let's say George Washington fighting for the cause and being imprisoned by the British. Right, right. You know, that's what it would be like right now. Exactly. Um, Yeah, because remember, we talked about Trump being like a reincarnation, like a a modern reincarnation of the the founding fathers. I'm not saying he's a literal literal reincarnation, guys, but like he's the same energy. Yes, he has that same energy. Yep. That's why he's supposed to be president during our, our uh, Pluto return. Yep. Yeah. I agree. All right. And then let's see. What else do they have here? An- an- another, another, well, isn't Neptune retrograde in July? Um, let me find out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we're going to talk about that next month. Yeah. So one thing with Neptune retrograde is, you have to basically question everything. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of stuff guess. comes, a lot of stuff is revealed during that time too. Exa- exactly. It goes, it goes retrograde on July 2nd. Okay. Yep. Let me see what else I have. Donald Trump's progressive return for the verdict. I actually jumped to that already. So I did that one. Oh, hold on. Let's see. That's for, that's, that's his actual solar return. And this is for the for this is for the the sentencing, sentencing. Yeah, I already looked at that one. So the sentencing one I did not look at. This is Trump's chart, progressive return chart for the sentencing day. So we got Astria, the God, Astria of Justice, on the on the ascendant, which is good. That's going to also be conjunct his, his Mars. <laughs> then we've got. Uh, the part of fortune uh, in the fourth house, which is that's that I consider that good, just as much as uh, Jupiter and Venus signatures as well. The seventh house is empty. Um, that insinuates that there's going to be something amiss uh, when it comes to the sentencing or whatever. Again, when we were looking at the the prosecution or the the Trump verdict chart, the first house was empty. For the same day so they don't got their shit together their ducks aren't in a row we already know that but astrologically speaking that's what that insinuates then we've got the 10th house again has jupiter and uranus there and we already know from the previous charts that we looked at what happens with uranus and jupiter for trump in this in this case so it's going to have some sort of unpredictable benefit so and you know, the sinister signature here in the 12th house of conspiracies or incarceration. This right here still tells me that he could theoretically be put under house arrest or something. And, but I don't, I, I'm still leaning towards it's going to be like, they're going to, they're going to petition for a stay and they're not going to enforce it right away. But just the fact that they have the audacity to charge him and, 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 and convict him and sentence him is just going to and rile the base even more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you have people, you know, you posted it online, the video of the monkey driving saying, I will vote for a convicted felon on election day. You know, it's like, okay, well, 
um, there's other people who are in power now and have been in power in the past who have done many actions that they should be convicted of. Right. Or they have been even. Why Exactly. So why are we making a big deal about this man? Right. It's just because the, the news is fantasizing about it and doing this on purpose. Oh yeah. Any, and like, again, anything for optics, anything to put in the history books, what is not real. Yep, exactly. And then I think my last chart that I have is, I just thought this would be fun to look at. This is Donald Trump's solar return for last year. So June 14, 2023 versus this year, because his birthday is coming up in 10 days, uh, for June 13, 2024. I just kind of like to compare and contrast, uh, especially solar return charts, because once you're looking at the year year following a solar return, you can reflect on the chart and go, wow, well, that makes sense. Well, this makes sense. So that makes sense. And then you can kind of apply those things, how they progress into the following year. And with his 2023 chart, it's interesting because he's got this Curon in Aries right here, which means that his his uh, self or person will be violated in some way. But he has Neptune ahead of it, meaning that he had no idea it was going to happen or he didn't think it was going to happen. He was completely like in, in the dark about it. So, like like he said in interviews, they tried to bring this case like five plus years ago, and nobody would take it because it had nothing. So he's actually he was actually shocked. That's what the chart insinuates that this was brought because nobody else wanted to touch it before. Saturn also in the in the twelfth house. This is a this is a very important signature, and this can be applied to any time that Saturn's in the twelfth house. This is there's something conspiring against you. There's like a cabal or some sort of, you know, group or something. There's a collective effort to conspire against you. Now that you mentioned that, that Saturn there, here's how I see it. This, you know, this cabal, this, this evilness that's here in Saturn is bringing in a lot of deceptive information Yep. to hurt the man's ego as much as possible. So the war is against him personally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think it's funny. He's got that Mars, Mars, uh, Black and Lilith here in the sixth house is the past house, which means that this cabal is technically happening because of past things he's done or said. Yeah. And you know, it's because of what he did when he was originally elected for his first term. So when we look at his future houses here, we have the moon and Jupiter and Uranus right here in the future house. This is very similar to the signatures that he had in the trial. Exactly. The, 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 luck, the luck signature. Yep. Yep, for sure. And then he's got Astria right here, which is um, associated with justice in an orb conjunction with Uranus here. So some, some unpredictable, abnormal, beneficial thing will bring him justice in the second house. Yeah. This is also, the, like, house yeah. This is also the house that represents money, guys. And so all that money he's getting for his campaign, there it is. I and think the, it's cool he's got that um, his Mercury and home sign of Gemini Yeah. in the third, especially in the third. Yeah, and then I love that the part of Fortune's in here, too. Yes. The only thing that can make this better is if Venus was here, too. I know. But that's Where okay. He's, he's got Venus in the fifth, too. Well, so, yep. So I think that's, yeah, Venus in the fifth is really good for him there as well. Yeah, so he has a lot of positive signatures going on, so... Think about the future houses. They're not applying to his current solar return in 2023. They're applying to like next year. So we keep going around. He's got Scorpio there. Okay. The only thing that's bad is the Pluto right there at the 29th degree of Capricorn, which that's destruction by the, the Capricorn signature, which is the powers that be corporations, deep state, blah, 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 blah. Those yeah. sorts of things. So that's the only bad thing he has going on here. And obviously, as we can tell, he's been prosecuted. There's obviously some terrible things going on towards him right now. And that's how it applies when I've told people before. When you see Pluto in a future house, that means that something not good is going to happen. So we can confirm now, speed forward to this year, there are things not happening that are not good for him. But in the end, it'll end up, this house right here will overweigh that Pluto signature there easy wow. so yeah then we look at this chart he's gonna be um i think 70 i don't know i don't even remember he's gonna be 79 uh, uh he's gonna be 80 he's gonna be 80 uh for this birthday 
Okay, so we've got, let's see, the now houses, which will be going on right now. He's got that sinister signature there, which that it's June 13th. It's right in, this, right in the stick of all this bullshit going on with, with the trial and all that and his conviction. Not too much going on over here. The 10th house has that Neptune signature of deception there. And just, I remember when I had Neptune going over my 10th house and I was reading more into it. What it, what I gathered from it from a personal level is that you're not exactly sure how the public perceives you at the moment. That you're, you have some sort of cognitive dissonance or disconnect with your public life and yourself. I would that, look. I, I would say uh, that you're kind. Of, you're right on that. There's a disconnect. Yeah, or you you don't understand how people are perceiving you, and it could also be people are perpetuating lies or misunderstandings about you as well. So I agree. So that's what's going on for him this year. Obviously, they're trying to slander him to all hell, um, and he's got Black Moon Lilith opposition of those signatures, which means that they're going to be abusing and using information. But the part of fortunes. In, within an or conjunction of Black Moon Love, which means that this is going to end up helping him in the end, <laughs> as it mm. usually does, because that goes back to his Sun Uranus Midhaven conjunction. And again, we got we got Pluto in the eighth house. That means he's going to go through some sort of turmoil in some way, shape, or form. We also have Mars in the eleventh house, which means things aren't going to be. Uh, you got to think about it like in the moment too. This is all going on, but this will continue on into his following soul return. So Pluto there, Mars there. Um, but And then here in his 12th house, this is the one thing that I also saw that made me think that maybe they're going to do a stay on him and not going to throw the book at him on the on the July, tw uh, July, July 11th. When you have Jupiter in the 12th house, that is a signature where like you get out by the skin, like the skin of your knees, like you almost like completely were screwed, but one little thing saved your ass at the end. Like you thought you were screwed, you didn't have any luck, nothing's gonna happen. Like you're you're gonna get the hugest consequence that you could possibly get, and then you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I I escaped that. So he's got that right there. He's also got Venus in that house as well. So. This would insinuate that he has some sort of luck with something doing in the past. And also this would be insinuating that he would be immune to the conspiracies, the cabal against him. I agree. Yeah. So I mean, that's what we've been seeing this entire time. Right. So that'll be his birthday present to him. He, I still am convinced that he has an astrologer. I mean, he, he could have a, he does have psychic signatures, of course, but I'm still convinced he has an astrologer of some kind, and they probably are really good. I mean, he wouldn't hire somebody who's not good. And um, they kind of warned him about this already, so he already knows. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, he'll he'll come out in this some way, shape, or form. You know, it's just going to be stressful. It's going to be stupid. Um, so my final prediction, I guess, is I don't think they're going to be as hard, in, hard on him on the 11th. And even if they are, it's going to be stayed. And it's not going to be enforced until probably after the election. And this is just going to torpedo his win for the 2024 election. Oh, yeah. the red That's when the red wave that you've predicted comes through, in my opinion. Finally. <laughs> I mean, personally, because, I mean, if you see how, I mean, look at how unhappy the poll show that they are with Congress right now. Right, right. It's all the money going to foreign stuff when we're all poor. Yeah, and you hear more and more people talk about it. Yeah, and they're talking about, like, increasing taxes even more so then they mm -hmm. can fund other things. And I'm all like, so we're poor as shit. We can't afford anything. You want to increase taxes on us after it's already been increased this year. Oh, yeah, we just got notification that the district wants to – the school district here wants to have a meeting to increase school taxes by $20 million. No way. Now, there is a, a town that is 20 minutes north of us that is part of our county, and everyone that has money lives in this part of town. All the And majority of the investment that the district has done has been in that area. Meanwhile, our schools have suffered. So, 
I mean, it's a lot of people are starting to get pissed off because one thing that I read on the comments was parents are saying, you know, hey, what about the kids in Lancaster? Right. So, I mean, people are really starting to speak up, talk more, and, and, and really open up. And I think the, as we see this unfold, we're really going to see it pop a lot more. For sure. Yeah. You know, it's really funny too. One of my clients that, you know, gets readings from me every year for, for their birthday, they, they contacted me earlier this, uh, they didn't get a birthday reading this year, but they said, cause the economy is too bad. And I'm like, it's okay. I understand. Um, I did offer them like half off if they still want to do it, they'll get back to me. But, uh, they said, actually, I think I'm good. You know why? Some of the things that you predicted for me, like last year and the year before, they're still panning out right now damn i'm like oh snap it's like yeah they even insinuated that they think i predict things two years in advance hey some people do that yeah well that would make sense because that's when i said that red wave was going to happen 2022 oh, yeah there was one time <laughs> where i was helping someone out um they were um they were trying to figure out like you know whether or not to proceed or stay in a relationship i'm like well stick around for at least another year and a half Right. Then talk to me. They did what I said. Next thing I know, I get a message. I'm engaged. I'm getting married in a few months. Oh, snap. And I was like, well, you see what I, you know, I, I told you to wait for a reason. There was a process that was unfolding with that person that needed to unfold to get to that point. Right, right. I just wasn't going to tell you that's what's going to happen. I can only tell you, hey, you need to let this happen so that you guys can move forward. Oh, oh, that's nice. You're one of those. You're one of those readers that like tries to let the free will thing go on and say, "Oh no, just let it keep going." Pretty much. I mean, yeah. No, with me, it's I find something. Unfortunately, I'm just stuck on that one thing, and then it becomes a. Uh, I start asking you questions like, "Is this happening? What's going on there?" Right. Da da da. da. And then from there, I'm like, "Okay, cool." And then it just unfolds like that, and then it's just I just flow with it. I always got to spoil everything. I say everything I see. <laughs> I go, oh, no, you got to stay with this person because you're going to marry him. You're good. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, see, I knew she would marry him, but I was like, girl. I'm like, dude, you got to let – you. you're going through a process. You They got to go through their process. Oh, yeah. It ain't you. It's a process. I totally mm -hmm. just ruin everything. Yeah. I'm like, let, 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 let the surgeon, which is the stars, do their work. They're doing surgery. Let them do their surgery. You'll be just fine. Yeah. You know, it's funny. When I first met my husband, right, it, we, we were talking for four months, and I went and met him. And then the first week, the first week we were together visiting, and I saw him, I said, oh, just so you know, we're going to get married, and you're going to have a daughter. And <laughs> the kid oh is going to be like, what? And I was like, yeah, and luckily he was he's one of those weird, kooky, spiritual people, too, so he didn't take it bad. Yeah. <laughs> Most people would be like, you're crazy. I get looked at weird. Yeah. And, and then I'll be like, um, is this happening to you? Yeah, why? Well, you know, I just want to let you know that this might be unfolding in the background. I don't believe in that bullshit. Okay, no problem. Let it happen. Let that next happen thing I know. Too. Yep, next thing I know, he'll... Yeah, this happened to them. I'm like, okay. And in my mind, I'm like, I fucking told you. That kind of stuff used to make me mad, but, like, I've gotten over it because I just accepted it. Like, I used to be like, I do, yeah. you, didn't, you didn't listen to me? See, I was exactly right. Blah, blah, blah. But I don't take it personal anymore. I'm like, yeah, I noticed that's a trend. But anyway, we're going to yeah. wrap this up. We have already been here for an hour. This was supposed to be quick. Anyway. It was. Anyway, so just a recap for you guys, all you people in YouTube land. Uh, we do have our podcast, Transit Talk Astrology. You can see it on the screen here. It's on Spotify. And then also just letting you know, I know Yomi does readings. I don't know what her availability is, but I do readings still, obviously. You can go to rayreinhardts.com, even though it says WordPress, because I need to update my domain name. Uh, you can see all of my available um, services and all that jazz. And feel free to subscribe to us on Spotify. And we'll be doing more of this stuff. And then next, next time... Hopefully we'll be showing our faces and getting a little bit more uh, personal with you guys here on YouTube. And we don't know exactly how often we're going to be doing these things. We might just do them as needed, kind of like today, or we might schedule something. Uh, just uh, bear with us, and uh, thank you for tuning in. All right. Bye, Yomi. Bye.